Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Super honored that you're taking the time to be here with me today. This day, this Friday, begins a special series that I am going to do for the next, I don't know how many weeks, because I probably have a lot to say about this, all about going and heading yourself into the gig economy. Now, here's what I mean by that. There are people who are taking gigs like graphic artists or people on Broadway who work the gig economy because they're doing shows or things like that. There are voiceover artists who are in unions and doing those kinds of things. That That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who decide in markets, quite frankly, outside of New York City, although New York City has this, but if you decide that you are are interested in either turning your current side hustle as a balloon twister or a juggler or a, or singing telegram person or a tarot card reader or a dancer from more than a side hustle into a more primary earnings vehicle, these episodes are going to be for you because one of the things that you're going to need to know how to do is work with talent agents. Now, Again, these aren't the talent agents that are going to represent you and only you like big stars like Adele or Taylor Swift have. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about the kinds of talent agents who uh, get bookings from clients, who get uh, actually requests from clients who are holding events that they want a comedian or a magician or a palm reader or a dancer or uh, a band, for example, and they need to find the people who can do these gigs. Now, if you're one of these people who's been thinking about doing that sort of thing, that's awesome. There are a couple things to remember before you take the leap. One, do you have enough money to support yourself? And this is important because gig life can be challenging. If you don't have money in the bank or another revenue stream, you could be living with six roommates for the next 12 years. And if you're cool with that, that's great. I'm not cool with that. So before I left my full-time job, when I was working at NASA many moons ago to go be a professional musician, I spent time working both. For a long time, I was working 90 to 100 hours a week because I do my NASA job for 40 hours a week. And then I was a professional musician and voice teacher outside of those hours. So as I made more money as a professional musician, I truncated my hours at NASA, for example, until I was working almost no time for NASA because I was making the bulk of my earnings being a musician and a tarot card reader and all of these other things. So that's the, one of the first things that you need to know is whether or not you can sustain yourself either with a mix of some sort of a day job and also doing gigs or doing 100% gigs. You're going to have to decide that for yourself. Then you're going to have to decide whether or not you're in a market, you're living in a market where this kind of thing is possible, right? When I was uh, first going from full-time employment to living the gig life, I was living in in the Washington, D.C. area that has a pretty thriving gig community. There are a fair number of talent agencies where you can go and you can sign yourself up and you can become a talent on their roster. And these are the kinds of things that I'm going to detail in the coming episodes. How do you do that? What do you need to know? What do you need to have in order to become talent in these in these uh, talent agencies files? So you need to see for yourself, are you living in in Chicago or are you living in Tallahassee? Are you living in New Orleans or Seattle? And are those kinds of things happening? Are these places event destinations? Do people have their weddings there or conferences or big corporate events or parties or things like that? If they don't, you might want to look farther afield and see whether or not it's possible, whether or not there are talent agencies, whether or not gigs to be found. Check with your friends on social and see what kind of things they're doing, what kind of possibilities they see. It's always a friend's game. So if you know people who are either already doing this kind of work or people you can talk to who might know people, getting in touch with them and going, hey, this is what's what I want to do, what I'm trying to do do you have any recommendations for me is a really good way to go. And then 
do your research as far as you can, if you don't have friends who are in the business in this way, Google. Google is your very best friend. Find, you know, Googling talent agency Tallahassee or Tampa, you will get all sorts of information and start looking and making a database. And there are plenty of CRMs, which are, uh, they're basically, um, they're, these are client databases, right? You can, you can actually create one in a spreadsheet that you can get for free. You can go to Sheets, uh, Google's Sheets, or if you can have access to Excel, or there are other CRMs out there. And you can start a database of talent agents, right? You, the name of the person, their email, the agency they work for, the kinds of talent they're booking, right? If you are a palm reader and this talent agent really only books musicians, eh, chances are you're not going to want to focus on that talent agent too much, right? So we're going to talk about all of this kind of thing in the coming episodes. But I wanted to give you a heads up that before you start going, yes, I want to do this. I want to, I want to become someone who lives the gig life and I travel where the gigs are and all of this wonderful stuff, you have to decide whether or not you're ready, whether or not you want to, whether or not you are okay with the uncertainty of getting paid. That happens sometimes, and there's going to be an entire episode devoted to what you need to do as far as making sure that you get paid for the gigs you do, things like advanced deposits and uh, making sure the check is in the mail when they say it's in the mail, that sort of thing. But there is, there is a certain amount of uncertainty living the gig life. You take on extra responsibility. There's no one giving you a W-2. You might get a 1099 form for, for, for IRS taxes purposes, but there's also no certainty of a steady paycheck. And that is a big deal. It's a big deal. You have to be willing and able to handle that, that things can be uncertain sometimes. I, I find it stressful personally to, to live that part of the gig life. And so I have to have some strategies in place and I'm going to talk about those in future episodes, but you have to have strategies in place or you have to be okay with things being a little bit more uncertain when you're living the gig life. If you're good with it, then proceed. If not, this could be a fun academic exercise for you listening for the next few weeks, but I'm going to go deeply, deeply into all of this, what you need to know, what you need to do, how you need to behave, the kinds of things you need in order to really embark on this in a way that's going to be successful. So make sure you're ready. Make sure you're okay with uncertainty. Make sure you have financial resources enough to tide you over when times are tight in the gig life. Because let look at COVID, for example. When the pandemic hit, the entertainment industry was some of the hardest hit uh, industries. Why? Because a lot of that kind of stuff goes live. Now people pivoted. They went through and were uh, doing virtual gigs. My husband performed at libraries virtually, right? So there, those kinds of things are possible. And, and I did too. I, I play music on the college circuit sometimes and I did my gigs virtually. And it's cool if you can do it, but you have to be ready to do it. And a lot, when live venues, when live performances went kaput, in 2020, we had to deal, we all had to deal with how that was going to go because the cream rises to the top for sure. So a lot of the biggest names are the ones that were getting booked if they were getting booked at all. And now, for example, I live in the New York City uh, market. And when I am competing for gigs here, I'm competing with Broadway stars, right? If they, if they, need extra cash, they can dip down into that. Now, most of them are union. So it's a different thing. I'm not union because I'm not a, I'm not a, an actor's equity or a SAG after person, uh, because that's not the kind of work I do. So they, there are certain gigs they cannot take. So people like me can, because I am not either actor's equity or SAG after, but it's important to note that if you're in a market where the, the competition is going to be fierce, the competition is going to be fierce. You have to understand that and you have to be okay with it. You have to be okay with being the one not picked. Lots of things you have to evaluate for yourself. And maybe I'll create a little checklist or something like that. I'll see if I can manage to do that before <laughs> I put this episode up. But I really want you to understand that there's a lot to be aware of and a lot to get straight on if you are going to do, embark on this life. It's not easy. It's worth it but it's not easy. Alrighty, come back next week when I start talking about the nitty and the gritty 
about how to embark on the gig life so that you get to live the life you want to live doing the creative stuff you love to do. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast, reminding you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you.